Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you a makeup tutorial. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna cook Lumpiang Shanghai. This is one of my husband's favorite Filipino dishes. And I learned this from my Lola's recipe book, Let's Cook with Nora. So today I'm gonna share it with you guys. Nora Daza was a pioneer TV chef in the Philippines and her cookbook is considered a classic in every Filipino household. Cooking runs deep in my family, and we owe it all to my Lola Nora. I miss her so much, and I want to bring back some of her favorite recipes and her passion for good food. This is Cooking with My Lola. Okay, so Lumpiang Shanghai. What do we need for this dish? There is ground pork and some shrimp. This is minced shrimp. Last time I made it, we used the shrimp heads in the tail and we kept that for stock, so you can do the same. Um, it really doesn't matter what you put inside as long as there's a yummy pork base. Like you can also have maybe some chicken and shrimp or you can have only shrimp or just pork. Here in the book, it doesn't have carrots, but I grew up eating Lumpiang Shanghai with carrots, so I decided to put it here today. And lastly, we're gonna have Sinkamas or Jamaica. I didn't know what this was for. Is it Jamaica? Jam Hikama. 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 Sorry. Jamaica's a country. Yeah, Jamaica. <laughs> um, this is a great extender and it's a very neutral flavor and it's delicious and crunchy. So let's start. First thing we need to do is combine the ground pork, Sinkamas, spring onions, and egg in a bowl. This is good enough for me. It's finely chopped. This is the shrimp. We already pre cut it. We're gonna add it here. One teaspoon of soy sauce. And then I'm gonna add my carrot kind of addition. Sorry, Lola. Oh, we have a carrot. We're just gonna mix this really well. And one thing that my grandmother also taught me is make sure everything is balanced. So even up to today, my Tita Nina reminds me that you have to have everything mixed well and properly, and there's a good amount of pork to shrimp ratio. I love eating lumpia because it reminds me of my childhood, and I feel Anything that is crunchy always automatically makes me feel like it's delicious. So here we have the filling and I forgot to add the egg, so add the egg now. Mix everything and I won't forget to add salt and pepper. So the egg is really something that's gonna bring it all together and make it like coagulate. Okay, so salt and pepper, there you have it. So now that that's done, I'm going to ready my fire. I have anxiety lighting this. There, I got it! Okay, so we're just gonna wait for that. So now that that is kind of set and we're waiting for this to boil, I'm going to make the slurry. I also just learned this. The slurry is what seals the lumpia together. It's very underrated, but you actually need to have it. I'm gonna use today the Maya cornstarch. Cornstarch is something everyone kind of overlooks, but it's a staple. You must have it in your pantry. And Maya, obviously, is one of the trusted brands. My grandmother's been using this for years. And so I thought, why not use it as well? So let's just use one tablespoon and add it with maybe one teaspoon of water. Okay, so now I have my lumpia wrapper, which is store-bought. And I'm gonna take a spoon because it's actually easier to put the filling. It's around one and a half tablespoon. And really spread it out all the way till the end so that, you know when you take a bite of lumpia and there's like nothing in the filling and you're like, where's the meat? Okay, now we get the slurry and this is what's gonna seal the deal. Okay, once you're done with the lumpia, you kind of put it there and it's gonna be a shallow fry. Okay, so first we're gonna fry one side and I always do this mistake where I wanna finish everything and it ends up overcrowding the pan. So just three. Wait for it to brown. And the reason why you have to really have a balanced lumpia is because sometimes if it's too thick, then the pork and the shrimp don't cook inside because the lumpia wrapper browns easily. So you need to make it just right. Okay, now that the turon is done, just kidding, this is Lumpiang Shanghai. I know it's a little bit big. When I used to make this with my grandmother, it would be in small squares, but this is fine. I kind of like it also. Okay, now that that's done, we're gonna make the sweet and sour sauce. And to make the sweet and sour sauce, I think we really need the Maya cornstarch because that's what's really gonna get everything all together. It is around two tablespoons. 
and we're gonna make another slurry. Just mix it together and this is gonna help thicken the sweet and sour sauce and that's what makes it very different from you know, just adding it with a ketchup or a mayonnaise. It's really the layers. Okay, next I have to fry the ketchup. That's really bizarre and I've never fried ketchup before but I'm gonna trust you Lola. One tablespoon of cooking oil, I'm just gonna put that in the saucepan. Wait for it to heat. And then I'm gonna get two tablespoons of ketchup, add that, and wait for that to kind of heat up. So I'm gonna combine the water, the vinegar, and the sugar, and the salt. Just mix it all together. I'm gonna add this to the frying ketchup already. And this is what's gonna make the sweet and sour sauce. So as you can see here, it's kind of an orangey color and it's looking more like sweet and sour. I'm gonna taste it first to see if it lacks some salt because I didn't measure the salt. Oh my gosh, that is some good sweet and sour sauce. Okay, now I'm gonna add my Maya cornstarch slurry to thicken it because, you know, when you eat Long Piang Shanghai, you kind of want the sauce to be thick and really get, I'm a double dipper. The Maya cornstarch slurry really makes the sauce thicker and you can see that it's going to make it a bit shinier later. So how do I know if my sauce is already thick and ready? I kind of use a spoon and see that if it covers it. See? So there you go. It's ready. It's perfect. Now that we're done making our savory merienda, this would be perfect with something sweet. So what better than the Maya hotcakes? So I'm gonna put this aside and make our very easy, fluffy and tasty original Maya hotcake mix. All I need, the recipe's just right here in the back, is 3 fourths cup of water right here, medium-sized egg, two tablespoons of cooking oil. I'm just gonna take two tablespoons. I'm going to emulsify the egg in the oil first. What I love about this hot cake mix is it's so easy to do. There's not a lot of prep time. So we regularly have this in the weekends, like Sunday banana pancakes. Sometimes I put chocolate chip. Sometimes I just add like white chocolate on top. There's always like a chocolate element. So it says right here, we're gonna heat the pan and obviously we have to put oil when we cook it. Cover the whole pan so that it doesn't stick. A little tip I learned is not to overmix it. So if there are some lumps, that's okay because that's gonna give the pancakes kind of texture and make it, you know, a bit fluffy. And now all we have to do is wait for the bubbles. When it starts bubbling, that's when you can flip it. I'm not really good at flipping pancakes, but I'm gonna try my best. So there you have it, a merienda that's both savory and sweet. I think you guys should really try this if you want to have a bit of both. And also if you have a few guests over, it's a perfect dish to kind of serve for everyone. So I'm gonna taste the pancakes. Mmm, just the right amount of fluff to maple syrup ratio. And now I'm gonna try my lumpia. I know this is an unusual pairing for merienda, but I think it works. I hope you guys try it at home. Bye!